I've been using Notion to post all of my tweets. It's super cool, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. The reason that I'm using Notion for this is because I'm trying to scale back some of the services that I'm paying for, all of these subscription fees that add up over time, having them for different social platforms that do different things. I'm just getting tired of that and I want my own system. Now, all of my information is stored in Notion anyways for anything I'm posting to social media, whether it's a photo, text, or a video to YouTube, whatever, it's in my content database, which I have a template for. If you want that, you can check out the link down in the description below and get access to that for free. And so posting content from Notion, that I did not really think was possible until I started looking a little bit deeper into Zapier. Now, I've been using Zapier for a variety of things for a long time, probably been using Zapier for uh, I don't know, close to 10 years, maybe even longer. But as far as utilizing it for Notion, I've just been using it for simple things like connecting my task manager app to Notion so that when I quick add tasks, it goes right into Notion. But I thought to myself, what if I could actually schedule content in Notion and have it post to the platform that I want it to post to? And it turns out it actually works. So I'm gonna walk you through how I set up my connection of Notion using Zapier to post tweets to Twitter. And really this can be done for pretty much any social media platform that you can post to from a tool like Zapier. So let's jump into it. Okay, so here are some of the different tweets that I've actually scheduled. This one was just a simple text tweet with a link and it brought in the link preview. This one was text with a link and, and also an image attachment. Same with this one right here. And so it's very easy to make dynamic tweets that people just wouldn't really know came from some sort of an automation tool, uh, but that's what we're gonna do. So that's the tweets and this is the Zap setup in Zapier. So we're gonna walk through setting this up, but before we do that, we do actually need to create a new Zap that we can pull from or a new tweet that we could pull from, and we'll do that in Notion. So I'm gonna go ahead and click plus to add a new item to my content database. And we're gonna call this the test tweet for video tutorial. I'm gonna give it a social content type. We're gonna choose status as scheduled. And we're also going to allow Zapier to update the status for us, which is gonna be awesome. We'll then go down to platform and choose Twitter. And then in text, we're going to put, this is a test tweet. Pretty cool that this came from Notion. Now, the challenge here is that like hashtags work. So I could do a hashtag Notion. But if I use the at symbol, it doesn't really work because it wants to mention a page. So even if I put notion hq in here and then click away and the at symbol is there it's actually going to strip that out i haven't figured out a way to keep the at symbol in there so adding another account i don't know if that's possible so if i wanted to add an image i can upload an image so we'll go ahead and click choose file and i'm just going to go ahead and grab an image uh, we'll just grab this image here that i've already uploaded uh, before, but we'll just put it in there. Now, one of the challenges is that I can't just like leave this here and it will pull in the file. I wish that I could, but I could not find this uh, in Zapier. So what you'll have to do is actually get the original. So just click view original and then copy the URL. Now it's a long URL. It's like an Amazon uh, AWS URL that you'll have to copy and then go back into Notion and paste this into the URL. So very simple, very messy URL, but it is what it is. I've also tried Dropbox, like putting a Dropbox link in there. The problem is, is that a lot of these different uh, file sharing tools don't give a direct link to the image. They give a direct link to their website that has the image in it, and then you have to download the image. So you have to have a link to the direct image. So as it opened up here, this is an image that's just sitting in the browser. It's not in a web page or anything like that. So it has to be that, otherwise it's not going to work. But of course, if you were posting a URL in here, 
you don't have to use an image because it'll pull in an image from the URL. So if it's a blog post or something like that that you're sharing and there's an image in the blog post, it will pull that in and uh, you don't have to add the file or add the URL here as I've shown you. I'm just showing you this as an example. This is ready to go. All I need to do now is give it a time. And so I need to give it the time of, let's say, 1116 because that's a couple minutes into the future here. And now this is ready to go. We're not gonna put anything down here in the page because we're not setting it up that way. And so this tweet is ready to go and it's gonna utilize the zap that I've already set up here. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and create a new zap and so I could walk you through this process. We'll click new. We're gonna hit Notion, Notion latest new database item because we want it to be triggered when a new database item is uh, is found you'll need to connect your notion account which i've already done so um, i just connected it there i'm going to hit continue and then i'm going to choose my database which is the uh, content database and hit continue and it's going to test that we want to test the trigger so it pulls in our most recent entry that's why we just created a new entry we want to make sure we have the most recent entry in here and so it's testing by pulling in data from my notion account and uh, you can see it's pulled in a few items here i just want to find the right one it's probably database eight uh, item a yes test tweet for video tutorial so we'll click continue now what we need to do is delay. We need to add a delay. So we're gonna click on delay by Zapier. We're gonna choose delay until and then click continue. Now the delay until is going to be the date and time that we are publishing that tweet. So it might be all the way down at the bottom, uh, but basically you need properties, publish, date, start. You can't choose your publish date because there's no data there. Publish date, end date publish date time zone, all of that stuff, there's no data there. You need to look for the actual publish start date. In my particular setup here, it says properties publish date start. So look for the item that has the actual date that you're looking for. And then continue if it's up to one day. I'll just leave that on default because if a tweet is in the past or if I added something in the past or if it failed, I want time to be able to get in there and fix it and then I'll hit test action. It's gonna verify what I've chosen here as options. And I can uh, simply publish this app if I wanted to, but I don't wanna do that because it wouldn't go anywhere. I wanna connect this to Twitter. So I'm gonna click on Twitter or search for Twitter. We'll then create a tweet, hit continue. Choose your account. You may have to connect your Twitter account, which will take a few seconds. Now in the message, we're gonna click and we're gonna choose our Notion new database item. And we're gonna scroll down till we find the text for our tweet. So here's the text and we'll add that. We'll choose URL for the image and not the URL of the actual Notion page, we need the URL that we entered that has all of that information. And so you'll look for URL, and this is the one that has that Amazon AWS long link for the image. And then you could put shorten URLs. If yes, Zapier will shorten links in your tweet message body, defaults to yes. Now, Twitter will probably bypass this and, um, and utilize their own link shortening. For example, that tweet that I posted, if we go back here, I posted this and it's a direct URL. It didn't use a Zapier shortener. It used a Twitter shortener, but it displays the URL. So I don't think it matters whether you set that up or not. Um, I just left it to default yes. We'll hit continue. I will hit test action. And then when we test the action, it's gonna go ahead and send that tweet. And after that, we can publish our zap. So let's go and see if we've published the tweet yet. Refresh my page and ah, yep, we've got it. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this tweet because I don't want it there. Hit delete. And so you basically just need to publish your zap. If your zap came in as untitled zap, I would give it a name like Notion to Twitter automation or something like that so that you know. Now, if there are any issues, I'm not going to publish this one, but I'm gonna go back here and show you the history of my previous setup. 
or the setup that's live, uh, you can go and take a look and see if there are any issues. Uh, if you have any problems, you can come in here into the history and view the history of its publishing. You could see here when I was doing some testing, I had some issues. And so you can troubleshoot and figure out what's going on if there's problems within the Zap. And you may even get an email as well. Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's super cool to be able to use Notion to perform tasks like this. I mean, I'm using Notion already to store all of that information. So why not utilize it to just post the information to social media and schedule the different pieces of content. Very, very cool. So there's a couple things that you're going to need. You're gonna need Zapier and you're gonna need a content database type of template. So make sure to check out the links down in the description below to get access to those. As I walked you through the process, I hope that you were able to follow along. If you have any questions or comments, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. But that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for being here and I'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.